things like that. And when I got a voice, I said, I've got to do something with this. And hence the foundation. And now I decided to give back where the, the name of the actual event, the give back event happened. We started five years ago, uh, 30 people, three dance classes, that was it. And now we've humbly grown into, you know, over 500 people and um, over 25 dance classes. And this year we put in an online portion called Dance It Up. And now that you've grown, like, is this only in Toronto right now or is this, in, is this across Canada as well? Right now it's only in Ontario, but um, our plan for next year is to expand and bring the Give Back event across Canada. And for places that we can't go to, when we do the Give Back event, which is the day of free dances, then we want to do the online portion and broadcast it as well across the world, actually. And that's called the Dance It Up fundraiser. Now, Trey, you've had an amazing history, and you've been dancing for many years. You've also been a judge, and so you think you can dance Canada, a show that was extremely popular in this country and online and around the world, actually, as well. So just going back into your history, just tell us what, you know, what was so passionate, what drew you to dance? Well, I grew up in a domestic abusive family, and for me, um, being a woman of color, it wasn't something that was new. I, unfortunately, heard that that happened a lot, but I didn't know that, being young and naive and ignorant. But it was dance that literally kept me alive. One day I had this thought of, I can't be here anymore. God, I'm coming back to you. I'm coming home. And I said, if I'm meant to do anything, let me stay here. And God said, no, you're going to stay. And thankfully, I, I found my voice and said, my duty is to give to people. That's, that's what makes me happy, seeing a bunch of kids sitting around and just walking up to me and saying, thank you, Trey. That's why I do it. If it's even just one child that I can change, then it's all worth it. Dance is such a, a very complex um, career as well. It can have its ups and its downs. And you're one of the people that I admire the most in dance because you, you've been able to sustain an amazing career. And it seems like you are very flexible in your choices. Can you give a lot of people some insight, you know, the people watching, I'm sorry, some insight as to how to sustain a career in dance? I love you for that right there. I really do. Um, the number one thing I'll say is don't be fooled. You live in Canada. We, have, we might have 10% of the population, but in my opinion, we have 100% of the talent that Americans do. There's nothing different except borders. And we, we constrict ourselves because we are a bordered country. So what we're conservative by nature. We're actually very not conservative people when you really look around. We're very multifaceted, multidimensional, multi-ethnic. Um, so if we're worldly people, we got to be worldly here. My thing is, do you, be you. Don't come to Canada and try to be Canadian. Be you. If you're born here, have a sense of who you are and, and walk with that proudly. When someone says you can't, say, why? I love that answer. I do, because as Canadians, we're unique, and I think that's what makes us can't, you know, Canadians and being proud. And I think a lot of people, um, they hear the word can't so much, and they think it's not possible. Like, what do you say to people who constantly hear the word no? Uh, can't to me is an acronym, and it just stands for certainly I'm not trying to. So when someone says you can't, I go, no, you're wrong, because I certainly am trying. And you know what? I'm not going to try anymore. I'm just going to do. So from now on, I say do you. And that's all. That's it. That's it. I mean, if we make it too complicated, it becomes complicated. And I think that we just need to focus on if you have a dream, go for it. Why work on your backup? You're going to be a backup forever. So go, go work on your dream. So what would you say the pros or cons like versus when you started versus the kids that are starting today? Oh my gosh, YouTube. <laughs> it's a pro and a con. Um, the pro is that you learn so much more, you know, on YouTube. When we were growing up, it was barely um, Rap City that we had to look at for hip hop or, or, or you know, you know, any kind of Caribbean thing was very hard to find, right? But um, now YouTube has everything that you need. Um, so it's great, but it's also negative because it, it doesn't allow us to also be our own person and grow as a unique talent. We depend on the video to tell us what we're supposed to do. No, totally wrong. So an example would be for people to maybe not watch YouTube as much, get out there and, you know, get something going for themselves. Yes, like um, our foundation has a very unique program called Detour, and we did it for all girls first, 
And in this program, not only do the girls tell us what they want to do and tell us what styles of dance, we also get them to create their own cartoon dance characters. Why? Well, it's a way to kind of show them that, you know what, you can be something that you want to be without being human, and you can make it fun and creative, but you can also use it to inspire yourself to dance. And I created these dance cards um, called Davatars, Dancing Avatars. It, we'll have to talk about that. And um, it's, it's the cartoon characters that they create is inspired by the Davatars, because every Davatar is a different character and in a different urban move. And it just all ethnicities, white, black, Asian, brown, everything. And fully clothed, fully clothed, but funky, 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 fresh. So that's what I wanted to inspire, that you can be anything you want to be, regardless of your size or your creed or your look or your, your sexual background. Just keep dreaming and you will achieve. So beautiful. I love that. And you, and you said the program's for girls. Is it also for boys as well who are, who are interested in getting into dance? Well, we're looking for more funding so that we can bring it to um, all boys. Um, we started in Parkdale with all girls. High success rate. We had um, 11 out of 15 girls continue the program for 12 weeks, which is a great rate. Over 75% of them stayed with us. And uh, we're hoping to bring it across Canada now. So we're looking for funding. And um, if you guys can, visit www.treyfoundation.org and hit us up on Twitter at Trey Foundation one to and we'll give you more information. And you're also on Facebook as well? You know it, yes. <laughs> so you can find me uh, at Trey Armstrong on Facebook and also my dance studio. <laughs> A New Day is also on Facebook. So check us out. Uh, we can keep going, actually. He'll edit it. But did you want to also talk about um, New Day and, and explain, uh, you know, for people watching in Toronto and maybe outside of Toronto as well who are interested in getting involved? Please. So the dance studio that I opened up um, in 2011, <laughs> last year, a few months ago, it's called A New Day. And A New Day stands for A New Dance Academy for the Entertainment Industry. So it's all about love and community. And, and making dance more than just dance, it can be a business. So I think a lot of Caribbean parents think that dance doesn't make any money. I can speak from experience, yes they do, especially in the arts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's totally wrong. Maybe in Canada we don't get as much, but you know what, you can make it, you just have to know how to hustle. You gotta be business minded, you can't just be a creative entity, t entity here. And you gotta know where to, what doors to push and how to create an opportunity. And that's what we do at our studio. We teach our kids dance technique, dance style, but also how to be a business entity. I'm glad you brought that up, actually, because business is the key in whether it's music or acting and, of course, dance. Do you find, like, are you encouraging students to maybe travel abroad? There's a lot outside of Canada as well, and they can just kind of take, you know, use their talent here and, and show the world, but also come back here as well and show Canada what they've learned as well. Absolutely. I mean, we do promote people to, you know, hone your skills here and you have to travel to get to know what the world is like. It's, you need worldly experience, but so you can't afford it. No problem. You can still hone your skills here because we can bring the, the world to you. But you got you gotta you gotta want it. You you've gotta call it to yourself. So you gotta you gotta try really hard, blood, sweat and tears here, and the world will come to you. And then if it can't, you'll find a way to get out there. And we just ask you, come back home, share what you find with the people here. That's all. Um, Trey, there's so much more I want to ask you too about the dance. <laughs> um, you, well, actually, you're also an actress as well too, right? Did you want to, you know, are you working on anything at the moment or that you want to share with everyone? Right now, I'm actually on hiatus from the acting only because um, I want to focus more on directing now. And yeah, creative and artistic direction. and. Hopefully even, you know, direct my own video. I think I've got a great eye, so that's where I'm going right now. I mean, I still love to act. And, you know, if any opportunities come up, I definitely look at them seriously. But you are definitely thinking of directing a video for your dance, for a new day? Um, for a new day, and also a few little other ventures out there. So we'll, we'll see what pops up. Are there any other projects that you're working on? You're so multifaceted and multi-talented. What, any other projects you have coming up? Yes working on sleeping in my bed <laughs> yes that's what it is I'm tired but you know I'll keep going for the world I will if it, if it tires me out to my last bone I'll do it well you did say you were starting um, a new project in October for um, dance it up yes. 
Okay. Yes. Um, next year, we plan on making this event much bigger and, and much even just, just even more expansive across Canada. So um, we're going to be starting to look for sponsors and uh, donators and people to get involved. So again, www.treyfoundation.org. Check us out. Thank you so much, Trey. Thank you for your time. And I love the kids here. Actually, before you go, yes. what are the ages of the kids that are here? Because I see them so young to very, you know, more mature. What are the ages? Um, we start at the age of seven and above, but we've had even kids who are five years old who are very mature and very, you know, advanced dancers. We say, sure, try it out. As long as it's good in their category, their age limit and their level, we say try because that's what this event is about. And, you know, we'd say, parents, bring your kids, bring your family. If your two-year-old wants to come and just sit around in the crib, sure. No problem. They can't take class. <laughs> I do see someone here that are very little. Yes, and we love them. I give them hugs and kisses. <laughs> Thank you very much, Trey. Good evening. I'm here at the Tropicana Community Services 19th Annual Caribbean Gala. I'm here with one of the award recipients, Dr. G. Raymond Chang. Nice to have you here. Great to be here. That's good. Um, so actually, I have to say up front, um, you know, I'm a little nervous. You're you're quite uh, distinguished in the community. I'm just Ray Chang. No need to be nervous. <laughs> All right, you'll find that uh, I am who I am. Thank you. What? How do you feel about receiving the award tonight? Well, you know, it's uh, obviously humbling. You know, uh, Tropicana Community Services does uh, you know a fantastic job. I, I, I was introduced to, uh, to them some years ago. Uh, there's a young guy and he's the person that works for me, right? And he introduced me to Tropicana, about, I guess about 15 years ago, right? They do a phenomenal job. And there are a lot of people watching D Dr. Chang and they want to follow in your footsteps. And I'm just going to be asking the question, um, how did you get to be so successful? Luck. I was very lucky, <laughs> and I can go back uh, a few generations, going back to Jamaica when my grandfather came to Jamaica. He was helped along the way. My father was helped along the way. I was helped along the way, right? And that's why I try to help. And yeah, as you know, things come back, yes. and you're rewarded in many ways. You seem very humble. I, I, I really like that. And I think that's what a lot of people are drawn to you and uh, giving you this award. Um, you give a lot back into the community. Um, is there something you'd like to see th as a community, uh, in the community growing and, and people doing things in the community? Is there something you would like to see happen? Well, you know, I'd, uh, I followed my parents and grandparents' example. They always gave back because they always remembered that they were helped along the way in more ways than one. Right? And I, yeah, I'd recommend everybody, and there are lots of us, and I know your, your market, there are a lot of new Canadians. In fact, as you know, the majority of the new, uh, you know, within the greater Toronto area, more than 35% of us are new Canadians. Right? And uh, I recommend everybody. I s to go out and step out of your comfort zone right, and meet all of the other new Canadians. We're all in the same boat. And guess what? We all have the same objectives, right? To make Canada and we are a, a better place. And we're all new Canadians. And this year is actually Jamaica's 50th in anniversary of independence. And you as a proud Jamaican, how does that make you feel? Well, you know, uh, it's great that you know, Jamaica has advanced in a lot of ways, but it has not advanced in a lot of other ways, and it's unfortunate. But notwithstanding, keep on trying. Uh, I, I guess the main thing I'd do is suggest to them to focus on